From the Ear to There Travel Studio, this is the Ear to There Disney Podcast. The Ear to There Podcast, it's time to start the show. Be sure to hold on tight, here we go. Exploring all the different Disney destinations. Ear to There, it's time to start the fun. Hello everybody and welcome to the Ear to There Disney Podcast. This is the star of the show. <laughs> no, my name is Phil Graham. Like I am the owner and the founder of Ear to There Travel. I am also the host of the podcast. Of course, Ear to There Travel is a Disney specialized travel agency. It is my job along with all of the vacationers. That's what we call the agents on the Ear to There Travel team. We're here to take away all the stress, all the anxiety, and all the time that it takes to plan a Disney trip. And hey, it causes a little more anxiety and stress these days with all the uncertainty, of course. And actually, that's what this episode is all about. I'll get to that in a minute because we want you to have a fabulous, fantastic time with your family and friends. And we want you to get the most out of your trip and just sit back and enjoy the magic. You can listen to this podcast. You can meet everyone on the Ear to Their Travel team. And you can get your free, no obligation quote over at Ear to Their Travel. Dot com. This is episode 207 for the week of August 17th, 2020. I have to be honest with you. I had to pause and look because who knows what the dates are <laughs> these days. It's kind of hard to keep track. I just know the kids are going back to school soon. Okay. I mean, back to school, but it's in our house at our dining room table. So actually the dining room table might be where you grab a drink, grab a snack, you like that segue? And as a famous mouse once said, on with the show. And before we roll out the topic of this week's show, it is time for the What About Bob segment. This is where Disney legend and Imagineer Bob Gar comes on the show to answer your questions and mine. Now, if you don't know who Bob is, Bob was hired by Walt Disney himself in 1954, and he designed so many awesome attraction vehicles in Disneyland and Walt Disney World, including the Autopia vehicles, the Tomorrowland Speedway vehicles, the People Mover, the Doom Buggies, the Monorail, the Matterhorn, you name it. If it's on wheels and in a Disney park, Bob Gurr designed it. The What About Bob segment is brought to you by the Waltland Bus Tour. This is where, when it's not COVID times, Bob Gar takes a group, a busload of people around Southern California with stops in Los Angeles, in Burbank, and in Glendale. You'll visit important sites from the history of the Disney company, but more importantly, in the life and history of its founder, Walt Disney. To get tickets when the Waltland Bus Tour is back up and running, you can head over to www.waltland.com. All right, here he is, my friend, Bob Gurr. It's what about Bob? Bob Gurr, the legend, creator of the Matterhorn, the monorails and the haunted mansion. What about Bob, the Disney legend? Isaac wants to know, what's your? do you have a favorite of the attractions that you did work on? And do you have a favorite among attractions that you did not work on? Yeah, the ones that I uh, worked on, my favorite is the fire engine on Main Street. Yeah, right. And the one that I didn't, uh, I, I didn't where I, I worked on a little bit, uh, is Small World. Yes. And the reason for that is, of all the kind of attractions that go into amusement parks around the world, once once you're in a in a a pleasant mood. You want to have a nice day with your family and your kids. You don't want to have to think. You don't want to have to endure a bunch of the banging, jarring around and loud racket and a bunch of stuff. Just get on the boat and go in the small world. To your eye, nothing needs to be explained. No words are necessary. They're singing songs. It doesn't matter what they sing. Just the eye candy of seeing beauty and lightness and color and simplicity and children and things that are kind of fantastical. Uh, you're not being bombarded with 
what we call immersive stuff today. You're not bombarded at all. You're taking a boat ride in a quiet and beautiful place with the people you love. That, to me, is a Walt Disney attraction. In the case of the fire engine, it was because I talked him into the fire engine because normally he picks everything in the park, and I'm the only one that ever uh, actually got an attraction started that he didn't start. But after we designed it and uh, we built it and I drove it down the freeway and delivered it in 1958, it turns out Walt wanted the fire engine after all because he was always dragging people around with him. Ah, oh, he just put them in the fire engine and he drives them around because he could drive a stick shift like anybody else. So the fact that um, Ward Kimball drove a fire engine and I drove his fire engine a couple of years before I went to Disney Studio, and that's why I wanted one, never going to get it. And then since Walt didn't have one, but 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 uh, Ward Kimball did, the fact that when I said, Walt, we don't have a fire engine, I think he figured, oh, say, we don't, but I could get one, and then he could use it. Hmm, interesting. You know, it's funny, I... Uh... I rode I rode the fire engine two months ago, right before Disneyland closed. <coughs> I was out there. It was actually I was I was in the park when the announcement came that they were gonna close the parks. Ooh, and, uh, right, yeah, up, right up the close, yeah. Wow. It was it was pretty creepy actually, because I just I had just gotten yeah. off of the Rise of the Resistance and it, I hadn't gotten uh, a ride yet. So okay. we rode Well, if you rode the you rode the fire engine. You probably rode with a with a thin, quiet guy. Yes. That's Steve. Steve's been driving that for forty two years. Yeah, yeah. He told me. I asked. Yeah, he. Uh, it was funny. He was telling me as we were driving. It was just me and a couple other people on it. And I said, "The people don't really move out of the way on Main Street when he's driving it down the street." <laughs> he laughed. He said, "No, they really don't." He's beeping the horn, and you know. But uh, yeah, it was the first time I ever got to ride it. I never got to ride it before, and I've been to Disneyland. I don't know, 12 times. So that was very cool to be able to, to get a yeah. chance to ride it. And you I know, know uh, yeah, they make us, they make a stop down by the railroad and then yeah. make the stop up at the castle. But whenever Steve sees me in between the two spots, he will break all the rules and he'll stop and pick me up. That's awesome. Of course. I mean, <laughs> or if I'm riding, thing. he'll, he'll let me out where I want to get out. Yeah. <laughs> and knowing it, knowing that the uh, area manager will kill him if he uh, gets caught. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hey, you, I think you've earned that right since you built a darn thing. You get to get oh, off yeah. where you want. <laughs> there you go for all you small world haters out there. <laughs> If Bob could have worked on any attraction that he didn't, is that right? That he didn't work on. If he could have chosen one, it would be It's a Small World. So all you guys that think it's boring or a kid ride, I've got news for you. The guy who designed the Matterhorn and the darn monorail wishes he had done some work on that one. So there you go. Sorry, I make myself laugh. Anyway, thank you to Isaac for reaching out with the question. Thank you to Bob for answering another question on the show. And now it's time to move on to the topic of this week's show. And this week is all about returning to the Walt Disney World theme parks. A little music from Big Thunder Mountain makes you want to go to the parks right now, doesn't it? The parks are back open. Yeah, Walt Disney World is open. All four theme parks, a limited number of resort hotels, Disney Springs, they're all open. Walt Disney World is accepting bookings for the rest of 2020 into 2021. But here we are in August of 2020. We're still right in the middle of a pandemic. And I get asked this all the time. What is it like in Walt Disney World? What is it like in the theme parks right now? Is it safe? Is it clean? Do people listen to the rules? And honestly, I think so, but I don't know because I haven't been there. But I do know someone who has. So I called all of my Walt Disney World expert friends to be guests on this podcast. Unfortunately, none of them showed up. So instead, I have to record a podcast with a guy you've heard on the show, my friend Chuck Rodriguez. Chuck, how are you? I'm fine. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that incredible. All right. Sorry, you were cutting out there for a minute. So 
Oh, no, that it sounds like what Kermit says about Muppet Labs, and that's why they wound up with uh, Honeydew and uh, Dr. Honeydew and Beaker instead of, like, actual uh, scientists. That's exactly right. All right, good. You got it. All right. <laughs> I might have to edit that because we were, we were fighting for, uh, for audio there. I don't know why. So, Chuck, everybody wants to know what it's like to go to Walt Disney World. We're recording this in August of 2020, and the masks are obviously still a requirement. Lots of social distancing. Lots of things are closed. You know, it's a very, very different time in not only Walt Disney World, but in all of Florida, all over the world. So let's talk about it, man. What's it like? What was it like? I know you've been there a couple times. Well, first of all, let me say that uh, in order for all of our lives to go back to normal, I would give up the experience that I had yesterday at the Magic Kingdom in a second. With that said, it was the most incredible and wonderful Disney Day experience I've had in over 20 years. Wow. <laughs> uh, in a nutshell, I was in the Magic Kingdom for only six hours from approximately one till close at seven. I took my time having lunch. I took my time having a Dole Whip. I took over 30 minutes to go shopping, and I still experienced 18 attractions. Wow. In six hours. In six hours. That's unbelievable. And I know I don't have, you know, uh, children and, uh, and and other adults dragging me down like some people. But <laughs> but still, I wasn't rushing, you know, and I was just randomly walking around the park over and over again. And whenever I saw that that it was obvious that a queue was uh, was no queue at all, whether it was posted, you know, posted a wait time or not, I went for it and I literally uh, there was actually only one attraction that I actually waited a long time for. Try to guess what that attraction is. Uh, it's obviously not an obvious one, or else I wouldn't even be, we wouldn't even be pointing it out. A hot dog in Casey's Corner. No, I know it's closed. Well, uh, no, because I was closed. That's I why know. I sent you that picture with my thumbs up, because I was so happy that Casey's was closed. <laughs> that's going to be the that's gonna be the cover art for this episode of the show, obviously. Please. Oh, uh, that's perfect. Um, let me think. One attraction that had a line... And it's not an obvious one, so it's I, not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say a line, but you did have to wait. In fact, I would say I waited 18 minutes, and it makes sense with the logistics of the attraction. I'm going to guess. I can't guess. I, um, let's say Peter Pan's flight. No, that was no no wait at all. What Almost was it? The whole time I was there. Break it to me. Carousel of Progress. Oh, that makes sense. You got to wait for the show to, to clear And out. I can tell that because they're only using two theaters as opposed to the six. Right, right. That makes sense. That's what I noticed. Yeah, they're only using the two. So they're disinfecting one while the other one disembarks, yada, yada, yada. So you stand there uh, watching it rotate four times before before they let you in. Only a true Disney nerd would go to <laughs> Carousel of Progress. And I love it. I love that because I love Carousel of Progress. But only a true Disney fan, old school Disney fan, would wait an even longer amount of time than normal to ride Carousel of Progress. Well, in fairness, I did not assume every time I walked past it, I just saw, you know, a few people standing outside like like normal. And the thing would rotate and I would assume that people would then get on. So I didn't realize that people were standing there for several rotations. One, once I, 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 I got in, you know, in, into the queue and I started waiting the more it rotated and we didn't get on, the more fascinated I was with the situation. So that's why I stayed. <laughs> <laughs> Always up for social experiments. That's for sure. Yes, exactly. So, all right. So what else did you do? What else did you get, get through yesterday? Um, I think I, I've tried to remember even in order. So I, I got to the park, like I said, uh, at one o'clock, I immediately, Went to Cosmic Rays and put in my m mobile order um, and then just wait, waited outside until the more mobile order thing said it was ready. And then I ate and then I went immediately to Space Mountain. No line whatsoever. Literally walked right onto a vehicle. Um, same thing then for Buzz Lightyear. Same thing for Little Mermaid. Then I went over to... What did I do next after that? I kept on walking because there was a bit of a wait at the time for Peter Pan's flight on Small World. So I kept walking. Haunted Mansion, same thing. So I kept walking. I think then I did, um, oh, the Tiki Room because then I had a Dole Whip. So then I, I took it over because, you know, you have, to, you have to eat or drink while you're sitting down. Right. So I went and got a quiet corner and uh, took my time eating that. 
Then I went shopping, <laughs> and then with no weights whatsoever, uh, Haunted Mansion twice, Thunder Mountain, Splash Mountain, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Jungle Cruise, Peter Pan's Flight, The Teacups. So you had the <laughs> ultimate, you had like the ultimate Disney fan day. Like you did all the, the greatest hits of Magic Kingdom in a day. It, it, it wound up being 17 attractions. Oh, and the Liberty Square Riverboat. So 17 attractions, one of them twice. So that's why I say I did 18 attractions in those six hours, plus a 30 minutes for lunch, plus 15 minutes for a Dole Whip, plus at least 30 minutes for shopping. And two of the attractions took forever, right? Because Carousel of Progress, with or without the wait, is 24 minutes, and the Liberty Square Riverboat is approximately 25 minutes. So even with all of that, 18 attractions yeah, in insane. six hours. That's crazy. So, all right, so we talked – a few uh, months ago, I guess, about Universal Orlando opening when he went to go to check that out. Tell me about what's the what's the protocol like? What's what are riding the attractions like? What's the social distancing like? Like, give me the lowdown on all the changes and all the precautions and all that stuff. For Universal, you mean compared to Disney? Just Disney. We people can go back and listen to that Universal one. Let's talk specifically about Disney about this oh. one. So. So obviously with Disney, the biggest thing, which, which is a problem but also makes the day perfection, is the fact that, they're you, that it is reservation only and the reservations are coming from the three buckets. So uh, as, in, as in, you know, every day they, they set aside some number of people who can make reservation if they're annual pass holders, some number if you're a resort guest, and some number if you just have a regular um, non-annual pass ticket. And so what happened for me personally is that, yes, it is difficult uh, since I do work Monday to Friday. Every time I try to look on the weekends to see if I could suddenly, you know, go to one of the parks for a few hours, there's nothing available except for the three original reservations that I made back when the system started. When I just randomly, my family and I just randomly chose uh, a Saturday in August and then a Saturday and a Sunday in September just to see how it works. Um and then I wound up at the last minute having this week off uh, uh, a vacation for work. And on t Monday night, I went on the website just out of curiosity very late at night, and they had just dumped huge availability. So I grabbed Magic Kingdom for Wednesday, um, and, um, and, that's, and that's how I got it. So because of that, because of the bucket thing, um, again, it's, it's bad because if you want to be spontaneous, like I did, and, and I wouldn't mind going back to the parks, you know, today or tomorrow for the rest of my vacation, but I can't because there's nothing available now. Right. But at the same time, it makes, it makes the experience perfect once you're actually there. Right. So, you know, it's a uh, 50, 50, six of one, half a dozen of the other, whatever, you know, however the, the sayings go. I don't know how that goes. I never said that saying in my life. <laughs> I have no clue. For the first time since I moved... <laughs> <laughs> For the first time since I moved back here, um, when I found out that I got vacation this week, which literally was Monday morning when my, bus, my boss told me, hey, go ahead and take this week off instead of uh, another week that I was thinking of doing. Um, the first thing I did was I did go on to uh, the, the, um, you know, the Disney World website to look at the resorts with the annual pass holder discount. And I was about to book Pop Century for Wednesday night allowing me to go to any park that I want on Wednesday and on Thursday because it was ridiculously affordable. I mean, ridiculous. But you didn't. So I was about to do that. Um, but, I, but I took my time uh, because I was going to see if other family members or friends wanted to do it, and, and they all are, are basically not ready yet, uh, either because of COVID or because this, this week starts the virtual school and they have to get ready for all that. So when I was about to book... Uh, that's when I found out that there was availability, you know, for Magic Kingdom without booking a hotel. And that's why I did what I did yesterday instead of going for two days and one night. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah. So, what, so yeah, that's the story. So what's it like, what's it like when you get, so what's it like getting in through security, getting in through the main entrance? Then what's it like in the park as far as all the differences, all the precautions and all that stuff? Uh, all done seamlessly. And, and I must admit, because, you know, now I've, I, I, at this point, well, at this point now I've been to Universal twice and Disney parks twice since everything began to reopen. Um, so I could really compare much better at Disney. 
Um, now, yesterday at the Magic Kingdom, you know, I arrived, what, in the parking lot just before 1 o'clock, and they, were st- they still had only filled up uh, the Zerg area and, like, the disabled access uh, parking lot and the preferred parking lot. That's it. There was everything else was empty, which is usually, you know, I, I don't I usually only end up parking in the Zerg area if I go late at night, you know, like two hours before the park closes, you know, when they close at 11 or midnight. That's when I usually end up parking at Zerg. But because of the way things are now, I parked at Zerg, even though it was, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and then, of course, you walk and um, you go straight to the, the thermometer screening with no weight whatsoever. There was only a handful of people be- in front of me or, or behind me, you know. Um, and uh, same thing for security. Um, only a handful of people around when I went through security. And then um, the monorail w- was, uh, was interesting because I was, you know, an, uh, a single person. So they did put me into a cabin with another single person. So basically they sat on one end of one of the one bench and I sat on the other end of the, of the other bench uh, facing them. Um, and then you get to the Magic Kingdom and you go through the turnstile like normal, except, of course, uh, no, no finger. You know, with the with the the finger on the on the thing. Right, what do you call that? With the, with the sensor. Your bands to get through. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's how that worked. You know, just just getting to the park. And then you know, inside the park, same thing. I, I've seen like videos. I'm sure everybody's seen videos of people. It's it's been. I mean, the 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 pictures in the middle of the day of Main Street look insane to me. Like literally, there's I've I've seen pictures of people. And videos who have Main Street to themselves, like it's 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 bizarre. Uh, did you find was it like that yesterday? Was there more people? Because then I've seen people compl- like complaining, like oh, it's actually crowded here today. Like, what's what's the in park experience? What's it feel like? I mean, if I take everything that I know so far into consideration, the one time I went to the studios, which was on a Saturday, the the yesterday at the Magic Kingdom. And also uh, my, my favorite uh, Disney bloggers that have been going like three or four times a week and posting pictures and, and writing about their experience. And they, they try to alternate between weekends and weekdays to give a good impression. Um, when I got there at one in the afternoon, Main Street was certainly not empty. But, I mean, it is empty compared to everything I've known, you know, for the past 40 years. Right. I, I mean, um, but it certainly wasn't. It certainly wasn't empty. How about, what was it like riding attractions as far as... Hand sanitizer as far as the cues, same as Universal, different than Universal? Uh, different. And I do prefer Disney's approach because they don't, they don't, ins- you know, they don't insist on, on you taking hand sanitizer right before you board. I mean, at, at Universal, literally the last staff member uh, holds a bottle in their hand and won't let you onto the, you know, onto the vehicle unless they squirt it uh, personally into your hand. Um but at, at Disney, there are multiple machines to do it on your own. And then it's much more easier to find the, 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 dispen- the, the sanitizer dispensers when you exit. To me, that's a big deal because I, you know, especially I guess because mostly because I'm alone and I'm not going to do much stuff between attractions. If I, for example, yesterday, if I went on Peter Pan's flight, right, there's no wait. I just went right on in. And then when I got off the, the, the pirate ship, I immediately got some hand sanitizer because I was touching obviously the, the safety bar and whatnot. And then, and then I, two seconds later, I'm on a vehicle in the haunted mansion. So there's no need to get, uh, there's no need for me to get sanitized again, you know, but when I got off a haunted mansion, yes, the first thing I did was sanitize my hands because I did touch the safety bar and whatnot. Right. Yeah. It makes sense. You didn't lower the safety bar. Did you? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> There's somebody, somebody that does that for you in the Haunted Mansion, for sure. Uh, uh, yes, I do, I do believe you get a warning saying, please do not lower the safety bar. Yeah, I will I, lower I, it for you. Uh, <laughs> by the way, Chuck, yesterday I got, because I'm a crazy person, and I don't have enough Disney stuff, I ordered the uh, the portraits from the the, sh- the shrinking, or the, the uh, what, do you, not, what is it called? Not shrinking. The spectrum. Yeah, the ones, the stre- that, yeah, the stretching room, the, the real long portraits. I ha- I now have those in my house, and they're like, how large are they? Oh, it's it, it's one thing, and it's it's one big, uh, canvas print. But it's on the one big canvas print. There's the four things. It's about four feet by like four feet wide by maybe 
I don't know, three feet. It's it's not huge, but it's it's big enough that it would take up a whole wall. Yeah. Uh, so now I'm just trying to figure out where poor Amy's going to let me keep it. Uh, we'll have to see. But anyway, I have a prediction that you guys are going to be the, the kind of people that are going to wind up having to buy the house next door. Uh, like how some people end up buying the house next door just because they have so many Christmas lights. They need another house to put Christmas lights on, yeah. but not to actually live in the house. You're going to have to do it because of all your Disney stuff. I know my house is getting, it's getting my, my office is getting just tighter and tighter by the day. And then we're, we've been talking about converting the garage. And I mean, I've been talking about make, taking it and making it a trader Sam's or a trader Phil's for years. So yeah. I haven't done it. Now we're debating. Do we move? <laughs> we are talking about it. Do we move where we need, cause we need more room or do we expand? I don't know. Now we're getting the fence anyway. So let's talk about, talk about social distancing and masks. How's that is, did you see most people wearing masks? I know it's a requirement for everyone to an older. How did, how do people do and how are people doing in the heat with the masks on? Is it hard to keep them on and see a lot of people taking them off? I actually did see, again, uh, I would say 95% or more uh, at all times, I saw people wearing the mask appropriately. Um, only a couple times did I see people who were, were drinking or, or eating, you know, without stopping and sitting someplace like you're supposed to, to right, in order to take was, the mask off. That was changed, right? They, Disney originally would allow you to walk around. And yes, yes, that. yeah. Um, only a couple times did I see that. Um Yesterday was a good day for masks here in Florida because even though it was, you know, 95 degrees, it was cloudy right up until when the sun was started to go down anyway. So I was not I was fine. I mean, I, I had the mask on, you know, every second, except for when I was eating or drinking for six hours. And I, I was perfectly fine. I didn't have trouble breathing or anything like that first horrible day that I went for 10 hours to Universal. <laughs> yeah. And I had to go to my car to, just to catch my breath uh, for 45 minutes because I thought I was going to die. Well, it's a real thing, uh, it was though, not right? I mean, people who have it is that's why Disney is said and Universal is said if you can't wear the mask, you can't come because then stay home. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, yeah. Listen, it's listen. Really every, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, it, it does come down to that. It is yeah. what it is. It's uh, it's just another thing that, you know, be, going to a theme park means you have to be at least a, a certain kind of level of healthiness. And, and if you don't, too bad to say, uh, yeah. you're going to have to stay home. And, yeah, I, mean, uh, and I, I think that's, that's, that's definite with the masks. It's only fair. I mean, listen, everybody wants to go, right? You want to go, you, you know, especially us who are big Disney fans and nerds. I've never gone this many months without being in a park. Like since I was an adult, excuse me. Sorry, I'm drinking a soda and I'm a little Coke Zero, little Coke Zero breath. Um, but I've never gone this long as an adult, I, I don't think, without taking a trip. And it's just, it's funny because it's only been, I, I was in a, well, let's be, I'm going to be honest. I was in Walt Disney World in October, uh, but then I didn't get, I was in Disneyland, but not for, for a, for a, um, a fun trip, but for a work trip in March when everything started going haywire with COVID. But it's been, you know, since October and it's August, it's been 10 months since an official Disney trip. We've never done that. Like, <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but that's what we do nope. for vacations. That's, that's not crazy at all. I was just thinking the same thing for my nieces. My, my, my niece, who was born, you know, almost 10 years ago now in October, she has never gone more than a month in her entire yeah. life without going to Disney Park. Yeah, I mean, she grew, she's grown from the up moment she was born. Yeah, so look, and I get people want to go, but it is it's a really serious thing. Like, I don't want to, you know, obviously infect, like get it, get you know, COVID or anything, and then get somebody sick when I come home. It just makes sense that the masks are a thing, and I know. Right now, by saying that, I'm probably alienating people who listen into the show. Who listen to the show, uh, and honestly, I don't like to alienate any listeners at all. But listen, we're told to wear the masks because it could save lives. That's what you do. It's as simple as that. Uh, so, all right. So, how about social distancing? Like, in how are the queues set up? Is it set up like Universal, where you? And I think I know the answer to this, but I remember you saying when you did the one attraction at Universal. It took a while for guests to kind of figure it out. Any of that in Magic Kingdom? Any of that in Hollywood Studios? It is. It is better at Disney. The the queues for two reasons. I think. I think one because there's less people anyway. I'm assuming. 
So it's just it's just easier maybe uh, in, with less crowds to, you know, to just go ahead and, and observe and take a look and see how, you know, how far the people in front of you and whatnot are. Uh, but also because Disney has added the, the plexiglass um, in many areas where, where it's impossible to make a person, you know, just go six feet, then 12 feet, then six feet, then 18 feet, then six feet with the stickers. So, yeah. So I, I think that's why it's better. It's obviously it's not perfect. Nothing is. I, I was trying to think about this a lot. The I was really trying to think about, you know, because I, I have not, you know, uh, ordered food or anything like that since this entire experience. I've always gone out a couple times a week quickly with a mask on to Publix or Target or Walmart or whatever, you know, every single week since this all started. Um, and I was trying to compare. And the only time that I was ever less than six free, feet from a person would be when I did sit down. To, to have my, my doll whip, for, for example. You know, I thought I was sitting in a, in a ridiculously quiet area. Um, and, but when, when, a, when people, when a family would just be, you know, walking uh, by me, even though it's obvious that I'm sitting there without a mask eating my doll whip, they were still like three inches away from me. Like they didn't even, they didn't even think to, you know, to go a few feet to the left, even though they easily could have. So, you know, that is what it is. And when you go in and out of the bathroom, uh, I don't see how that's possible, you no, know, right. not that's to not... maybe bump into a person <laughs> like like in the old days. I, I don't know how you can, you know, prevent that. Yeah, I, I never. It's really funny that you mentioned that. I didn't even think about that, but that's makes total sense. There's no way, you know, the way people come in and out of those those bathrooms, whipping around the corner. There's yeah, no it's you're, always you're... a corner so that that way there's no doors, but right. you can still, you know, not see people doing their business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and um, so – what about the character cavalcades? Did you see? Because there's obviously there's no real parades. They do, they are doing move it, shake it at Magic Kingdom, right? And then there's the character cavalcades. What are, what's that? Did you experience any of those? Did you stop and watch any of those? I experienced two, and I only stopped and watched, not because I think it's enlightening or makes me smile, but just because my nieces <laughs> want, wanted me to send a video. So. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I did think of you because well the, the first one uh, randomly you know I saw it was just one float with Tinkerbell and that's it you know that made it, me it, think, it, that made it you went think of me twice. Did you Say again? I said that the Tinkerbell made you think of me. No, no. Oh. <laughs> the the that was but that was the first one I saw um, twice. It just, you know, randomly went through the whole, uh, parade route from Frontierland all the way to, Fan uh, I mean, all the way to Main Street. And, um, and then at one point when I was about to uh, cross through Liberty Square in order, to, in order to get to Adventureland, uh, they, you know, a few people, I mean, there was barely a, any people around, but there were people who said, okay, wait until, you know, this flow passes by. And it was, um, First of all, it was Merida uh, on a horse, which I don't think I've ever seen before. So that was cool. And then behind her, with uh, every princess you can think of, is that Disney World's 15th anniversary from 1986 float that I've always made fun because they still have the same float and they just decorate it differently <laughs> for every single parade that ever happened. <laughs> I know which one you mean. It's just by you saying, yeah, it's, that. A, it's a glass. It looks like it looks like Cinderella Castle in the old, the old version of Cinderella Castle. Certainly not the new version. Um, with, you know, with the with the blue and the and the and the plexi or glass, whatever. Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, and how about um the uh, what did I just say? The character ca character things. Uh, did you notice any of the characters kind of standing around, like at the train station? Anybody at Galaxy's Edge, Chewbacca, anything like that? When I was at Hollywood Studios, um, I did not see Chewbacca. I only I only saw um, stormtroopers, which is no different than you know what I've seen there before uh, COVID uh, in the same spot and whatnot. Um, but yesterday, uh, yes, when I started leaving the park, I was all the way at, at Cinderella's Castle when it was about to end, so I can see it on the train station that the characters were saying goodbye because it was exactly, you know, like 7.05 and the park was, was start, was closing. Uh, but by the time I actually got to the end of main street, they, it was, it was, they were, they were, were gone. Um, I did see big Al, uh, on top of the country bear jamboree from the balcony. Cause I, I've seen, that's like a funny thing uh, funny. online. And I did see that when I was in Liberty square Riverboat, And I also saw stitch come out on the, the that stage that's in Tomorrowland. Uh, twice come out wave for a little while and then and then leave i did that, see that that's because he's been evicted from his spot 
in Tomorrowland. He's gone. Goodness, yeah. I'm, I'm glad he's homeless, actually, because <laughs> <laughs> his home can be so much better uh, with a, a new resident. <laughs> Apparently, right now, it's being used as, like, a break room. Like, I've, I've heard about... Yes, I am sure. Yeah, cast members kind of... The seats are still in there, and their cast members are kind of using that to, to get in the air conditioning and cool off for a while. The Tomorrowland cast members. Makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, so, what about... Um, I'm sorry. I'm like interviewing here and we usually don't do this, but I want to make sure I ask everything that maybe somebody who was thinking about going. Yes, please do. So they know exactly what to expect. So have you been to a resort where you went from a resort, used the transportation to the park or have you just strictly been in the park so far? Yeah, just the park so far. So that that's a good question, you know, because obviously I almost booked pop century, you know, if things had not worked out exactly the way they wound up working out. Um, I did notice though, because I know family members of mine are obsessed with the idea of, of, of staying at the contemporary because it's so much ridiculously more affordable than usual. And they're probably going to treat themselves to that. And when the monorail went through the contemporary, there was literally five people either sitting, eating, or walking in that grand concourse. And you know, no matter what time you ever are on the monorail, when it goes through the contemporary, it doesn't matter the day of the week. It doesn't matter the time of the day you usually see at least 50 or 75 people in the grand car course. Yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's bizarre. It's, it's a weird thing. Uh, what about, um, so you're put, let's, let's do this. Take yourself. You're not Chuck. Now you're, you're, um, better person. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make you, we're going to make you Tom from Maine and Tom from Maine is thinking about, He's been to Disney, he's been to Walt Disney World before. Uh, it's been Since a while. I live in Maine, am I am I am I uh, obsessed with? Um, oh no, I forgot the name of the, the famous author. <laughs> Stephen King. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, I think okay. you have to be. If you're right. from, yeah, if you're from Maine, you okay. have to be. So you're Tom from Maine. You love Stephen King. You were really upset when they replaced the extraterrestrial alien encounter. Uh, oh. Well, you love horror. You're a Stephen King fan, so. Well, no, that's a good point, and I and I and and even even uh, you know the not as good Chuck from Florida uh, was uh, <laughs> upset when an Alien Encounter went away. <laughs> so, you have a family. You're, you're you know you have a couple of kids, whatever. Do you bite the bullet, knowing what you know, to take a trip to Walt Disney World during a time when all these restrictions, but everything is in place. Or are you, are you waiting until 2021 to pull the trigger or later? First of all, the children, did I adopt or did I do a surrogacy situation? Why does that matter? <laughs> <laughs> I just had to throw that in there. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So interesting. You say this because I, I've, uh, there's actually a, a certain family member of mine, uh, who lives in, in, in New York, who, who, who desperately wants to come. And, and the few times that I've just, you know, I've been venturing out into the theme parks and things, I tried to think of it in terms of, of their needs. And it, it just comes down to, do, do you have any non-starters, right? I barely have any non-starters. I don't have any non-starters uh, myself or Tom from Maine. I don't, I, Tom from Maine does not have any non-starters, uh, none whatsoever. Uh, malleable to everything. Everything's like, okay, maybe we'll do that. Um, but uh, so if I was Tom with no non-starters, yes, I would go uh, unless I was more concerned about, you know, having to fly or drive all the way from Maine. I think that would be the part that would bother me more. And it does make sense uh, what the, the articles that just came out in the past in the past couple of weeks from visitflorida.com, who tracks all this stuff and everything else, that uh, 50% of people who've been going to the park so far have been out of state, but they've all been from like Alabama, South Carolina, Georgia, like they're all within driving yeah. states for the most part. And of course, only 1% of people have been international, uh, you know, compared to how it normally is. So as, as Tom, uh, with, uh, if I was, you know, driving, I could take my sweet time and I could drive and, um, and yes, I, 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 I would come because it wouldn't bother me that the hours are less because I know I'm going to do 18 attractions in six hours as long as my, my kids uh, aren't annoying and have to stop and have a snack or go to the bathroom every five minutes. I'm hoping I raise them right and they don't do that. 
And uh, <laughs> I love that you're you're making an entire life for your fictional children. This is fantastic. Well, it's better than the real one. So this is fun. This is fun. <laughs> um, um, so yes, as long as I understand that I that I'm going to be in the parks only for eight hours a day, as opposed to you know fourteen or sixteen hours a day like I used to. And I am not going to see certain things and I'm going to have to take the risk that the weather is good or bad for wearing a mask all day long. And the fact that I'm, I'm hope by that point, the kids, even the little ones would have had to practice putting on a mask. That's something I thought about a lot yesterday, uh, because I know some kids who, because their parents have not left the house and I'm actually not thinking about you guys. I'm actually thinking about other people as I say this. My kids have <laughs> done really well. Yesterday. They've been out, my kids I have been out was to, thinking of other people. My, my kids have been out to restaurants uh, twice in the last week. And oh, okay. So you're I, already ahead of a certain other family that I know of uh, yeah, that I well, speak to often. Listen, you know me, Chuck. It took a long, it took a long time for me to, to, to do it. But when we, we went out to dinner last weekend, and, it was, and they, my kids did great. They put the mask on. They walked to the table. And, anyway, so go ahead. Continue. No, no, but that's exactly my point, right? Because because some some families have not ventured out whatsoever, meaning the children have not practiced putting right. on a mask. And as a kid, I have to assume that if I was suddenly, you know, f- fifteen or ten or four uh, all over again, wearing a mask, w- I would have to get used to it. I probably would have to do it for a couple, of, you know, a few times, a few outings, a few days, in order to really, you know, uh, understand the concept as a kid. I'm sure of it. Uh, and while I was there yesterday, actually, there was one kid who, who you know, uh, I'm not saying that, uh, that, that I'm good at always picking out the bad things about people. But while I was in <laughs> line, I picked out this kid and I said, this kid is going to be a problem once we get inside the Tiki room. <laughs> and sure enough, I could just tell it was a kid who was not going to, you know, put the mask on uh, at, while the show was going on and was not going to sit down and was not going to do anything. So, so yes, I, I think it comes down to if the kids, if the kids have practiced putting on a mask, I think it comes down to a lot and the adults for that matter, because some adults need, need time to get used to it too. I think it would be horrible if, if you went through six or seven months of the past, you know, seven months of our lives, never having a mask on, uh, you know, and then suddenly you go to Disney world, that, that would be the dumbest thing yeah. I, would, I would ever think of in my life. Yeah, you'd really have to be have to have some practice. You have with to practice. You, it's something you have to practice. Yes. Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to do it. Uh, yeah, my kids. I, that's exactly why we haven't done it. Is that I just don't think they would keep them on all day. I really would if we told them to, but I, it just would change the experience for them a lot. And they're just used to. That's what they're used to, and this is what my my thing has been. Of course, I want people to go and have fun if they want to go. Of course, but the thing for my family is, you know. Well, Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, uh, all the locations are escapes from reality for us. And that's the thing where the outside world usually doesn't come in. And the masks and the closures and all of that, the, the hand sanitizer and the six feet. And that obviously brings the outside world into the bubble of Walt Disney World or Disneyland. And that's the difference for us. Because it's kind of like our escape from reality, not where we go to live real life. So... I get why people don't wouldn't want to go, and because it, it's the same reasons that I have. But then again, I totally get people who are, hey, listen, I and it's, this is how I am right now. It's like I've been in the house since March. Like I'm ready to just go. I want to do stuff. I want to. I want to. You know, walk down Main Street. I want to. I want to ride Pirates of the Caribbean. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Like. I can see both sides of it, and I myself, if it was just me, I'd be driving down tonight. But because of the family and, well, let's face it, the dog, <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that. But I really, you know, I wish I could. I do. I wish we were local. And I say it to Amy all the time, why the heck did we ever move? Uh, because I would love to be able to just go for a day. Uh, yes, and that's why, of course, I'm very excited because I'll be I'll be living within three miles of Walt Disney World starting on October 24th, and uh, I wish you all would be living approximately three miles from Walt Disney World <laughs> so soon after that as well. But um, um, yes, and and actually, that's a good point what you brought up there because I don't think I've thought of it because obviously I am alone, so it's just easier. So for me, I just figured that 
because these last seven months, I have not stuck to 100% quarantine because I don't need to as much as other people. I've gotten used to the fact that I have four masks, you know, two in the car and two in the apartment at all times. And I, and I put it on and take it off like it's nothing now. You know, I've just done it so many times and I'm so used to like when I see a hand sanitizer machine, I just go to it without even thinking. It's just, it's just part of me now. So once I started doing the theme parks, it wasn't even a big deal to me or or even the social distancing thing, you know, because I'm always used to like, I'm always, you know, walking much faster than other people. And I, and I get around crowds and I'm kind of annoying about that. Um, I have just instinctively, I've changed that, but there are people that I know, like you just said, the bubble thing makes a lot of sense. And I think I'm starting to find out that there's, there's two theories to that from what the few people that I know, there's people like y'all who simply it's just difficult, you know, to have to deal with something that, like you said, it's the Disney World is not is not a hundred percent escapism as a, at the moment because you have to deal with these things that you would have to deal with even if you just went to the supermarket, you know, in the next five minutes. It's no different than what you have to deal with in the supermarket than if you deal with a Walt Disney World. And then there are certain people that I know who feel that if they can afford five thousand dollars a night, that they should be able to have the uh, the experience they want and not be able to, and not have to do anything that they <laughs> that they don't want to do, but that's a whole other uh, that's a whole other problem. <laughs> that's the, they're the people that we were just that we talked about a little while ago. Who I said we both said if you can't abide by the rule, then don't you, you can't go now. Like don't, and I, I'm sure you've seen the, the clips online. There there was a um, I don't want to. I'm not going to mention any names or where, anything like that. But there was a a guy who brought his family down recently. It made it was all over the internet. And he tried to make it make it stink about the ADA and saying that he should be able to bring his yeah, yeah. Her, his daughter in who um who has who has autism he he should be able to bring her in without a mask, but she was over the age of two, and when you sign when you buy the tickets right now, when you pay for a park trip when you pay for a, a reservation anywhere on property, you have this is why I can't sign people up for, uh, I can't do, um, their park reservations. I can't, I can't as an agent, as somebody who owns a business, I can't choose their park reservation days because they have to individually sign that COVID waiver. Oh, uh-huh. I didn't think of that, but that makes sense. Right. And, and then you have to read it and say, you understand that you will be denied entry if you were over two and you're not wearing a mask. Uh, and this guy tried to get around that by using the ADA and saying the ADA says that people, and it's, it's incorrect. I, the, the, the company has to, I, I forget the exact terminology, but it's like they have to, if it's not re, if it's not a reasonable, um, what was it? I forget, but it, it's, I, I forget the exact wording. So I'm not going to try to re, re, you know say it, but anyway, it's private property. It's up to Disney. Disney has said, you can't come in without a mask if you're two or over. Uh, and that's it. That's as simple as that. And if, you, you know, if people don't want to abide by it, then you have to wait. You got to wait to go. You can't go and put other people at risk. And again, I'm, I'm running the risk here of alienating listeners and I, I don't like to do that, but it's pretty serious. You got to be careful. Uh, so, all right. So you said, so Tom from Maine, Chuck from Florida <laughs> is going, is taking his either surrogate produced children <laughs> or adopted children. You have their safety. Tom has their safety fully in mind, and he's taking the trip uh, to Walt Disney World. I agree with you, though. You know what it is? It's the flight thing, too. Like, I, because it takes us, I could do the drive in a day, but we have little kids, and we have to stop and go to the bathroom 55 times. So, uh, I, I, I think being within driving distance, within especially within a day's drive, makes all the difference in the world for people if you're going to go right now. It's just... it. Because even though the flights are dirt cheap, I was looking at flights. I can fly round trip to Orlando for 30 bucks. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if I want to fly. So I think you're right about that. I think that's exactly who is and will keep coming are people who are, you know, you can get there in five, six, seven hours. That's a, I mean, to me, that's a no, that's a no brainer. If you, if you're, if you were comfortable with it, if you were like you, you were mar- wearing the mask all the time, which listen, I've worn the mask where I have, I've worn a mask where whenever I've had to, uh, Whenever I, you know, go to a store, which has been pretty infrequent, but, uh, you know, it's funny is that when, when, uh, when I had to go outside this morning and talk to the guys who were installing our fence, the guy just keeps coming over to me. 
come walking over to me to talk to me. And I just start backing up. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you know how that is? It's such a weird thing now. Like, you know that you're not supposed to be near people. It's strange. That's, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I think you tried to shake my hand at first. And I was like, bud, listen, I was, <laughs> I'm all about the handshaking. I've, I used to give people hugs when I met them, but if, it's going to take a while to come back. I don't know. Do handshakes ever come back? They might not. I mean, yeah, who, who knows uh, to predict that? But yeah, so you're right. For for now, uh, at best, we, you know, I think I've done like the the foot thing. You know, where you just kind of <laughs> you you tap somebody else's uh, foot with your foot. That's like that's like a handshake now. I don't think that's a thing. That's something else altogether. <laughs> I've seen more than a handful of people do it. So who knows? It could that's be like different. a whole subculture of something else. Yeah, I don't think we're talking about the right thing here. Uh, no, so. But no, I've done. We've done the elbow, the the, the elbow bump. I've done that. Oh, elbow, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with like and like, but like, how do you teach little kids that? Like, my nephew Logan, he is two. So when we see them, when we see my sister and her husband and Logan, he just comes up and sits on your lap or grabs your hand or he does. You know, how are you going to teach a two year old? It's it's so hard. It's such a tricky thing because I don't. I haven't. Sh- I've seen my dad. I've seen my mom. I've seen my brother, sister. I've never, I haven't given any of them a hug or, sh- or shaking hands with my brother, or my dad. But when we see him, you can't help it. He's just all over you, he's too, you know? Yeah, no, I, at that age, you can't. And that's, I'm sure that's why, uh, you know, under two, you don't have to wear a mask also because it's like, how can you teach a, a two year old, you know, to yeah. wear a mask? I mean, you can't, that's crazy. You can't teach a two year old anything. <laughs> I can't teach a seven and a nine year old how to tie their shoes. I'm not going to be able to teach <laughs> a two year old how to leave you alone. Uh, all right, Chuck. Well, when are you going back? When's your next day in the parks? Do you have one scheduled? Well, actually, uh, um, yes, I do. I do have two reservations that were made a long time ago for a Saturday and Sunday uh, uh, at Disney in mid-September. Um, tomorrow, I, I'm, I'm actually meeting uh, friends in, or in downtown Orlando uh, for a lunch. So I thought maybe afterwards I would just go to Universal just randomly from like 2 to 6 because I'm pretty sure they close at 6 now. Um, you know, just because I'm there anyway, and you don't have to make a reservation. So I guess I might as well. That's awesome. Uh, and, and just to compare that, you know, because I have not enjoyed the universal experience on the weekends, which I've only gone on the weekend so far, but it'll be a Friday. So maybe, maybe it'll be a little better. And so I'm there, curious. What's, what do you know offhand? Cause I, I should know this, but I don't off the top of my head. What's the capacity of universal right now? Do you, do you know what percentage? No, I don't think I've read, uh, Anything since they opened when they when I believe uh, Orange County, the compromise they made was that they were going to try to stick to 20 to 30 percent capacity, I yeah. believe, is what they they said they were going to do. Um, but Universal, even though it feels crowded, they're obviously having troubles because they've now closed down a couple of resorts. They've closed down attractions. Yeah. That I guess are, are very uh, people intensive, which makes sense because all the attractions they close are kind of, you know, cast intensive. Um, so those are not even going to bother to be, you know, reopen for now. And the parks are only open from what? 10 to six. That's, that's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Chuck. All right, Tom. It was a fun podcast. Thanks for coming <laughs> on and, and, uh, tell your children. I said, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you got to ship me some maple syrup down here. Is that where it's They from? said hello, but you, you can't hear it because they're wearing their masks. So you can't hear them say hello. <laughs> Uh, with that, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Chuck. Okay. I had to use this outro music after using the uh, Big Thunder Mountain intro music. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Ear to There Disney Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. It is always greatly appreciated. Thank you to my guest, the one, the only, Mr. Chuck Rodriguez for coming on the show and for braving the elements of the Walt Disney World theme parks in a, well, let's face it, in a pandemic. So thanks, Chuck, for being on. Thank you to Isaac again for your question. Thank you to Bob Gurr for answering another question today. I hope you really enjoyed the episode. I hope now you have an idea or a better idea of if you are going to go back to the park this year in 2020, if you're going to wait until later in 2021. I know we're all itching to get back, like I said, in the episode. So do me a favor, though. If you do decide to go back anytime, whether it's now, whether it's in 2021, 22, and I don't ask this much, do me a favor and book a trip with a travel agency. 
And hey, if you want to book with Ear to Air Travel with me or one of my agents, we would really appreciate it. Everybody on the team is fantastic. And as you know, every little bit of business for small businesses right now helps. So I'm just asking if you do decide to travel to Walt Disney World or anywhere else, please give us a call, shoot me an email, shoot one of my agents an email. I would really appreciate it. All right, just remember there will be a new episode of the Ear to There Disney podcast next week and hopefully an episode of the Walt Disney World Word of the Week. We'll see what happens. <laughs> it's been busy, believe it or not. I know it's we're home and all that stuff, working from home, but it's been busy. So again, thank you so much for listening. You are awesome. I appreciate every single time you hit the play button. Have an amazing week with your family and friends. Bye-bye. Ear to third, ear to third.